y'all welcome back to my channel wanted to get on here today and do a video about eyeshadow tools these are things that I think are helpful to have around before you ever do an eyeshadow tutorial before you ever sit down and watch an eyeshadow tutorial if you have things these things at your house it is going to be so much easier for you now the idea for this was sparked this morning when i was reading through my comments and y'all i got the funniest comment by tina barton a friend of mine and subscriber on here and she was saying i need an eyeshadow tutorial on modern renaissance because i need help i think i look fine i go to school i look in the mirror and i scare myself and y'all I laughed so hard at that because that has so been me so many times. I cannot even tell you. I don't think I look fine. I go to my car. I look in the rearview mirror just, you know, before I pull out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I get out of the house like this? Then another time comes to mind. I was on the border, went to the bathroom, looked in the mirror, it was like, are you freaking serious? I sat at dinner like this and no one said anything. So these are things that will help with that little problem. Because <laughs> I'm sure if Tina's done that and I've done it, a ton of other people have too. So I'm going to list out five of my top. I think there's five. There may be four. I'm going to say five. Um, I'm going to try to make it five of my top tools to have around the house. Okay, I'm going to jump right into this. Number one, and this is a big number one right at the top, y'all, and that is a makeup mirror. And I would unplug it and bring it over here, but I'm too lazy. So I'm going to put a picture up here or over here. And I have the Zedro. I don't remember what I paid for it. I got it on Amazon. I'm sure it is not top of the line because I would not pay that for, you know, I, I would try not to pay that. Um, it's a Zedro. It's good enough. I don't scare myself when I get in the car anymore. I'm not surprised when I go to a bathroom at a restaurant. I am many times overly smoked out and too dark, and I know it. <laughs> I know it when I leave. So I'm not surprised by that. A makeup mirror, good lighting. Just good lighting. Sit in good natural light. But you know what? A lot of times I would think I was in natural light. I'd be sitting in my kitchen. But if the light is too far in front or behind or something, you'll mess yourself up. A makeup mirror, I'm telling you, even a travel, just get a travel lighted mirror. Those help so much. I love mine so much, I wouldn't even go on a trip without it. I just get it and show it to you. You know, if you don't want to invest in a big one, get a travel. This is my travel makeup mirror. And it is a, I don't know what this is, but I'll, I'll find it and I'll link it below. I love this. It lights up, you know, just anything just to get some good light on yourself so you don't surprise yourself. Thank you, Tina, for the laugh this morning. I was laughing for hours about that. Okay, then, and this is a close number two, y'all. This is 1B, and that is good brushes. And I'm not talking expensive brushes. I'm talking appropriate brushes. Top, for me, is a good crease brush. This is the Sigma E47. This is the best brush I have found for myself. It's a little bit stiff. It's a very pointy. It gets right in that crease. I love this brush. I have a backup of it. I love it so much. I love that, but find, and if you have hooded eyes, get a stinking tiny crease brush like that because you've got some work to do, girls. I mean, if you've got hooded eyes, you got work to do. Then my MAC 221. This is a crease brush for a normal person. For a someone with hooded eyes or small eyelids, this is a, a this is a blending brush for me. I use this for a blending brush. I, I love it. I blend my crease with this. Then a little bit fluffier than that is the Wayne Goss 17. You don't need to spend $30 on a brush. I'm just showing you this as an example of what to look for. A great fluffy blending brush. And then a fluffier blending brush that I don't use as often. This is the Wayne Goss number 16. These are about $30 a piece, I believe. The whole set was, I think, $150. But again, go to Morphe. Real Techniques has some good brushes. You don't need to spend a lot. Then the MAC 228. I love this. It's stiff. And I mostly use this to pack color on my lid. Real precise. This is great for shimmer shades or glitter just to pack that on, but I, a lot of times we'll come up and do some work over here, some in my crease, 
It's a real nice brush. I love it. Don't remember what I paid for it. Maybe around $25. Um, a bullet crease is good. If you're looking on Morphe, bullet creases are real good and stiff. Then a detail, small angle. The E65. I like that too. Um, the skinnier it is, the better control you're going to have with it. You place it real precise. Brushes, I'm telling y'all. That made the hugest difference because before I started looking at brushes and doing tutorials and stuff, I had one side little brush. It was an old drugstore brush and it was too fat. And I wondered why my eyeshadow was crapshoot. Sometimes it looked great and other times it looked horrible. And I was like, what, what is the deal? Well, sometimes I placed it real good above my, you know, in my transition and sometimes I didn't. So yeah, good brushes go a long, long way. Then this, y'all, this color cleaner, if you are working with soft shadows like Lorac, Anastasia, even the Tardist Pro, this is great because between every color, you clean that color off. So that if you have been working on your crease and then you decide, oh, I want to blend a little bit with that crease brush, you clean it off and then you start blending and you're not spreading that all over the place. This saves me a lot of cleanup in other ways. About six bucks on Amazon, and I'm going to link it. Then some cleanup brushes, and these are my go-tos. This is the Real Techniques Pointed Foundation Brush, and I use this here to clean up messes. I use it up here when I get too close to my eyebrow. Um, I use it here. Um, here. This is just great to have around. Real inexpensive. Real Techniques pretty much rocks. Um, this is a Artist Oval dupe. This is the Casey Republic. This is equivalent to the Artist number six. And I love this. I'm shocked every time at how good it cleans up right here. And then I come around and I just clean up real nice with that. I love it. I got these for about 13 bucks for five of different sizes. Then another thing I like to have a that's hairspray. No, not hairspray. I like to keep these two things around. Actually, I keep this around. The Neutrogena wipes I keep in my drawer over here, right beside my desk. Now, when I was first starting with the eyeshadow tutorials, I got one every day, every day, and kept it on my desk. And I would seriously clean up some big messes, like coming up around here to make clean lines, fall out down here. If you're just starting out with the eyeshadow tutorial, grab you some Neutrogena wipes. And if these are too drying, then keep a cotton, you know, pretty damp with some, something else, some kind of cleanup. This is a micellar. Also little baby beauty blenders. These are real nice to keep and clean up in here. So yeah, if you just have those things, you will be way ahead of the game. Not even talking about how expensive the eyeshadow is. Shimmers are mattes, but if you have good brushes, a makeup mirror, and some good cleanup utensils, you are ahead of the game. So anyway, I think that's all I have for you. I hope I don't remember anything else. If I do, I'll put it in comments down below and pin it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Leave comments and questions down below, and I will talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a good day. Bye.